For this setup, we are using the FTB-1 Pro platform with the FTBX-730C module. Once you're in the OTDR application, the interface will look similar or identical. Let's go ahead and launch the OTDR application. Up here in the top, select the OTDR icon. This will launch the application and you'll see a splash screen, and then shortly after that, the OTDR interface. This is the main OTDR tab. The very first thing you want to do is to determine what wavelengths you're going to use. In this case here, we've selected 1310 and 1550. Those are the most common dark fiber test wavelengths that are used in the industry. Next to that we have range, pulse width and duration. These need to be adjusted for each test that you're doing. In this case you're going to do a quick auto test based on the duration, and you're going to use 30 seconds typically for most of your testing. Of course, this value will adjust depending on your needs. If you're doing very high count fiber where you want to minimize the test time as much as possible you can reduce the duration somewhat, just as long as you don't start losing the quality of your result, so it's really a bit of a balancing act there. If you're in a maintenance situation, where you're looking for trouble where you really want the best resolution possible then you'll increase the duration up to about 60 seconds, or more to allow for that noise to clean up to give you better results. And so, at this point you're going to check and use 30 seconds, then next to it you're going to see the auto button here so you're going to select that auto button. You'll notice that range and pulse will now gray out. We're going to auto range and pulse with based on a 30 second test. Another thing you want to make sure of is that your launch cable is nulled out. In the bottom right, please click on the three dots. Up here is where you'll input your launch fiber length. In this example, the launch fiber is 150 meters. With the pigtail it works out to be about 160 meters. If you don't know your launch fiber length, simply plug it in and run a quick test and then write down the distance of that launch cable itself. In this case it is already set. Hit OK, and from here if you just want to get quick results you'll go and hit start up here in the top right. Of course, you want to make sure to inspect and clean your connectors and use a launch cable. The launch cable length will vary depending on the loss and the distance of the span that you're testing. What's really important to understand is that you see that first connector within your network. That patch panel that you're plugged into the device under test or the fiber under test. Ensure that you have a sufficient launch cable for that. The longer the span, the longer the launch cable needs to be. Typically, around 100 meters or 150 meters if it's under 20 kilometers. If you go over 20 kilometers, then you want at least 1,000 meters or so and for exceptionally long distances, we might get into 2.5 kilometers or more on the very high pulse width. The key takeaway is to make sure that you see the front of that connection. As this is testing, you'll see the count down here on the right. And what you're looking for quickly is you want to make sure that the noise floor down here is nice and clean, and it is right down here below 5 dB on the scale. You want to make sure that you can clearly see the end of the fiber, and here you can clearly see that it goes into the noise, so this is the end. If it runs off the screen, then the range is too short. You want the distance between where it goes flat here at the end, and the 5 dB noise floor. You want it to be about 5 to 10 dB above this 5 dB noise floor, and that's what we have here. Each one of these is a 5 dB increment. We are just a little over 5 dB above the noise floor and have a nice clean trace here. We can see the launch, and the port or the launch conditions here are launching within the green window which is what we want. Auto did a really good job in this situation here. You'll see it's marked all our events. And one of the first things you want to do once you've qualified is to ensure that you're happy with the way it looks. You will go to my event table here. When you scroll up to the launch it's going to be here at negative 160 meters, because that's where the OTDR port is. And you can look at the reflection here. You want this value to be as high as possible. Or as good as possible. If you disregard the negative, we want a higher value. Minus 60 is great. If it gets below minus 45 then we're out of the specifications of the unit. If you can't improve that by cleaning it, it needs to come back for repair. If you're happy with the result, you just go and hit save. And that's just a quick way to do an OTDR setup.